Hey there, it's Rob, the Ignorant Entrepreneur, and I actually wanted to talk about this video I came across while I was on TikTok that informed me that the Saudi Arabian prince, Mohammed bin Salman, he actually announced that he will allocate one trillion to build a 120 kilometer long horizontal skyscraper mirror line. Whew, even the name is long. <laughs> Most people right now just refer to it as the mirror line. That's part of the sleek, cool design is that the outside will completely reflect. Not only is it going to be extremely long, it'll be higher than the Empire State Building. So I was, I was on TikTok and I saw this video. I'm seeing the nice videography that's showing the layout and all the different aspects that are going to be involved in this. I wanted to share this to you guys in my own little video format, let you guys know what I thought. My first initial reaction, well, let's jump right into it. 120 kilometer or 105 mile long structure that will function as a city. So the whole idea behind this is that this structure will function as a city and it will have 9 million residents that are using renewable energy. Obviously, they're in the desert, so climate will be a big, big area of focus. It will need to rely on a mix of shade, sunlight and ventilation. So the Saudi leadership, they're trying to reshape the Northwest and you got to give it to them. All that oil money. Glad to see that it's going to good use if this isn't just for show. And I'll get into that here shortly. So the design concepts that they revealed, it did really look futuristic. And of course, the whole concept behind a walled city. I'm not even sure if I've seen that in a show or movie before. My initial reactions to it was kind of scared. I was kind of like threatened by it almost. It almost looked dystopian to me. Uh, just some of the shots that I'm looking at, you know, keeping people in some sort of structure like this, almost a cage or prison, because I'm not sure what the infrastructure outside of this looks like, but let's say you want to get some breath of fresh air outside of the city. You walk out and you're in the desert. I'm not really thinking of it like a prison, maybe like if you're in a mall 24 seven and kind of just look around you and not feel entrapped. I mean, this is going to be a large structure, so it, it might not feel that way. But if we go into the details here, it will be roughly 200 meters wide or 220 yards. And rise 500 meters above the sea level, which is higher than the Empire State Building, like I said. And here's the real thing behind this is that residents will be able to run errands within a five minute walk. There will be no cars or roads. That to me is the most revolutionary part of all. Instead, there will be a high speed rail that will carry people end to end in 20 minutes. Now, this isn't an idea. Construction has already begun. And Saudi projections call for 1.5 million to live in the line by 2030. This unconventional megacity is part of the government's ambitious NEOM development project, which released conceptual videos, like I said, showing the city's high walls, enclosing trees, gardens, and other plant life, nestling communities among work and recreational structures. I'm actually going to have some of the clips, as you can see here in the video. It's not just this human structure abomination. You know, they're planning to include plant life and hopefully sort of integrate nature with tech as we often imagine the future will be like, unless you know the ones where it's like no plant life at all. And the vision for it is enhanced human livability. Now, who's to say? Because like I said, my first feeling was like threatened. I felt threatened by it. I don't know. Maybe they're onto something. I'm not sure how they came up with this idea. I think it's a lot better than what we currently have, where we just have a little bit of everything everywhere. Jobs, homes, they're just scattered all throughout. Travel time is increased because of it. Whereas if we had like structure in terms of like where people are living in the circle at a certain ring and work within another, maybe we could you know better design those cities. And that's what some of the billionaires are talking about when they're mentioning building new smart cities in the U.S., just just completely redesigning by this co-centric ideology. The entire focus is how we get from point A to point B. Because I think a lot of people know travel is one of the biggest time consumptions in modern day. And I'm not even a big proponent of cars. You'll see some of my other videos. I do not like vehicles as a transportation means. Traffic is the biggest reason. We also have emissions. I think it's just a lot of waste of time, especially with a lot of the work that can now be done from home or could always be done remote. But back to the wall. One of the questions I always like to ask is why, but what could possibly be a motive for building a city like this? My initial thought is attention. Why is Saudi Arabia trying to bring more attention to themselves? They have a lot of money. They could have done anything with that money. They could have improved living for their people in a number of different ways. But it seems like the Middle East is always trying to build the largest buildings in the world. They already have expressed that they have a fascination with architecture. But again, like with the case of the Burj Khalifa, it's not really serving a purpose outside of it just being the tallest building in the world. So I'm looking at this, the positives that they're putting out, they're clear. Uh, I can't really think of too many negatives other than just seeking attention. Uh, this could change the way that we think about design. I've 
don't recall too many different projects that countries have undergone that have been revolutionary like this. Now, I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Bahrain and Dubai. Bahrain is really close to Saudi Arabia, uh, but I've never had cause to ever visit Saudi Arabia. And that might be one of the big motivating factors. Like I said, attention, trying to rebuild the image of the Middle East and attracting people to want to go visit beyond just the Burj Khalifa and Dubai Mall and some of the other cool structures that they're trying to build in places like Abu Dhabi. Thinking about the economics of how things are going to move around in the city uh, in terms of like businesses, jobs, everything like that, they're all going to be existing within this place. It's going to have everything, jobs, uh, you know, I guess churches, anything people want to set up. Now, they will have a pier, as you can see in this picture. Uh, they will have places for ships to dock. So at least to start with, they're not going to be self-sustaining completely. And you'd still want trade and free e-commerce, of course. I do want to note that most critics are expecting this to take 50 years to build, although the prince wants it to be completed by 2030, which would only be eight, seven, eight years from now. Architects will take the curvature of the earth into account when designing the building. And some of the other perks that I did not mention was that it would have a separate underground high-speed train line, a stadium at a height of 304 meters, and like I said, the pier for ships. I think that their thought and some of the supporters are interested in the zero emissions and smaller footprint than conventional cities that this one will have. I think that it's cool that it's going to be built in the desert. Onlookers might look at it as a mirage. I don't imagine there'd be too much to disturb there. There were some critics that said that it could interrupt animal flight patterns, but otherwise taking use of a area that would not have been used otherwise. And yeah, I mean, this is groundbreaking. This is some of the things that I get most excited for where people are going against tradition and I'm interested to see. Maybe they're onto something, like I said here, and we'll start to see this grow in other cities and other countries. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This is a whopper. There's a lot going on here. Uh, I'm sure a lot hasn't been figured out, but I mean, sky's the limit in terms of how you could design within this line, as you can see in some of these pictures. Again, let me know what you think, please. This is very exciting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been The Ignorant Entrepreneur. I'm out.